y'all. So it's day one. Day one of what, Amy? I'm attempting to quit smoking again. I'm addicted to starting over. Explains why I can't stay sober. I haven't had a drink in like over six years. Isn't that crazy? I think it's crazy considering how much I was madly in love with alcohol. But much like cigarettes. It's like you get into something and you become convinced that it's all these things for you and it's really not any of them. <laughs> I mean, it's not like smoking cigarettes really like Absolved my boredom or anything like that. It's not like it really like added anything to my life that I needed. Like that'd be cool if like nicotine added some sort of spice. <laughs> like if it made your life more exciting. Like if more interesting people walked up to you all because you smoked cigarettes. I mean, I feel like that might be true to a certain extent. Because smoking is fucking awesome. <laughs> but, I, you know, the people that smoke cigarettes tend to be cooler than people that don't smoke cigarettes. I've noticed this. But, like, it's just making my fibromyalgia a lot worse. It's making things pretty shitty robbing me of what little energy I possess. I mean, like physical energy, not mental energy. I got plenty of that, as you know. Oh, God. So, like, last night... <laughs> After I ran out of the cigarettes, like I had this really terrible panic attack, right? And uh, I, uh, like I've noticed that like since I started smoking again, like I haven't cried. And like, I remember back when I was working at Steak and Shake and uh, I was like smoking like two packs a day and just going through bags and bags and bags of weed like every week um <laughs> it was pretty awesome though I gotta say but like I really thought that I was like better off because of it. this was like long before I discovered comedy and, and I was trying to write like that script about mental illness if you're lost God's grace is on your trail <laughs> Well, that's good news. <laughs> that means that I always have God's grace, right? <laughs> so I'm constantly lost. I have no GPS system. <laughs> GPS is the devil. <laughs> oh, okay. So anyway, what were we talking about? Probably addiction. 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 Affliction. crying yeah see it's it's very real for me to just be like in a pretty consistent state of sorrow and like if I'm doing something to distract me then I don't really it's like I'm numb to all that and I feel like cigarettes really do that um like I realized that just recently so don't think that you can't learn things from addiction you can um 
it's just you can't really just like stay in an addiction hoping that you you know have some kind of like growth spurt you know <laughs> but it will teach you a lot especially if you have that kind of mindset about it i feel like a lot of people just like drink and do drugs and it teaches them absolutely nothing um but it's like you can have a pretty incredible experience like doing a lot of different things or you can just have the same experience all the time but it gets you through that day you know like I remember I used to get sent home from my shitty job at McDonald's I worked in McDonald's drive through and I was I would get sent home quite often because I smelled like booze and it's like, there are a lot of days that I got sent home that I was like happy about it, you know? Cause I just couldn't wait to go back home and get started again. <laughs> and like, that's what I would think about like all day at work. I would just be fantasizing about those cold ones. <laughs> uh... Oh God. I just love booze so much. I love booze so much that I had to be exiled from booze. Then I just like drank beer only. And uh, that had the same effect as booze. It just took a lot longer. But yeah, I was like, I could talk about addiction for fucking every all. Like, I've got so much material on addiction just because of my own, like, personal experience with it. But it's just from what I've seen other people do to themselves. And especially now, you know, with all the constant double-clicking and hashtagging and Instagramming and all that crap, it's like, this is the worst addiction I've ever seen. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, fuck that. You don't want to be like all those people, man. Yeah, because I, I think about, you know, like I smoke. I mean, I've been smoking more than a pack. But if you think about it, if, if I just, if I pretended that I only smoked a pack a day, that's 20 times that I, I end up smoking. I think that people check their phones like around that same amount. Maybe more, maybe less. Hopefully less, but probably more, right? I don't know. It's it's it is definitely an addiction. Go on, old man. Go on. I need to get past. <laughs> Did they finally repave the parking lot so that it makes some kind of sense? Jesus fucking Christ! I can't fucking go. God fucking damn it. Here we go. Now. Now's the time, baby. Now's the time. Do you want a parking lot? It's paved. It's like so fucking beautiful. In the beginning, you know? <laughs> like most relationships. <laughs> Why well, I think like all relationships really, I don't think that there's like many relationships start off bad and up good. You know, it's like why would you continue to be with somebody if it's shit from the very beginning? <laughs> Maybe it's a masochistic relationship. Probably, yeah. <laughs> See, I don't need smokes to be funny, y'all. It's just I tell myself that it helps though. Well, I mean I'm sure it does. Everything helps and hurts. You know, you're attached to those babies. Cause like those babies make sense out of your anger problems and you know why the world sucks. Like so you can smoke. <laughs> right? Yeah, this is the kind of shit I tell myself. Stupid, huh? It's really stupid. 
But I do feel better, though. I mean, like I said, the nicotine was really robbing me of, of that teeny amount of energy that I had. But it's like, I need all of that, you know, especially at this job. Because this job's pretty shitty, but... Like, I hate being sluggish at work. I hate feeling like I'm going to fucking pass out. That's why I don't understand. Like, I, I had coworkers... They're gone now. They fucking quit. I really miss them. I never thought that I, I'd be saying, like, man, I miss my drug out coworkers. I really miss them falling down, passing out in the bathroom on Xanax. You know, like, <laughs> I miss them a lot, though. I really do. I wish they'd come back. They're not gonna, know. But, yeah, like, they'd be on all kinds of shit. I'm like, how are y'all having fun working right now? Like, I can understand, like, you getting high on the job and it being, like, entertaining. But with me, it's like, when the marijuana kicks in, it, like, makes me into... It, it makes me uh, go into, like, full gear, you know? Like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready! You know? Just to do what I'm supposed to do. I just get, like, super motivated, you know? Well, it, it's, it, it, uh, helps that creative part of your brain, you know? Yeah. I'm really lucky for that. Some people don't have marijuana. So, this is my piano that I brought today. Um... I figured out something really smart that I can do because I want to smoke so bad. Every time that I want a cigarette, I'm I'm still gonna like come outside, um, and enjoy my toothpick. You can enjoy a toothpick anywhere; it's great. But uh, I'm gonna play keys, you know, so I have something to do with my hands. I mean, that was what I should have done all along, but I'm so dumb that I didn't put two and two together. It was me. It's more like putting 10 and 10 together, you know? There are a lot of things that I need to connect. Anyway, bye-bye.